Okay, so I'm just going to talk about Socrates for a little bit. Yeah, Socrates, the, uh, uh, you know, when I first got into philosophy, I listened to some giants of philosophy thing by Knowledge Products presented by Charlton Heston, and uh, he talked about Socrates and Plato, and then also uh, everyone's heard of Nietzsche, and when Nietzsche mentions Socrates, if you're starting on Nietzsche, you probably don't even know who Socrates is. Maybe you don't even remember him being mentioned if you've never heard of him before. And then also, uh, you know, you might have heard of the allegory of the cave, where, uh, you know, imagine yourself strapped into a chair, looking at a cave wall and watching shadows. And uh, the those shadows are all of your uh, human experiences or everything that we do. And uh, it's also kind of like your, your skull and your sense of vision are the cave wall. Well, it's, it's a weird thing. Uh, but yeah, maybe you've heard of Socrates before and the uh, quote, the unexamined life is not worth living, Socrates and uh, also of the uh, Orphic uh, Delphi Oracle inscription, Know Thyself, and the Oracle of Delphi is supposed to have said that there is no one wiser than Socrates. So, you know, I got to, you know, Socrates' book, The Apology, for like a dollar or something, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, it can be pretty shocking, uh, the idea this is happening in, like, 500 B.C. in Athens, Greece, and, uh, he's standing trial for his crime of not believing in the Olympian gods and, uh, creating new gods and corrupting the youth. And then he's basically sentenced, uh, and he's his own lawyer. He's acting like a lawyer in the apology where he's defending himself. So he's standing trial, and he's defending himself. And then he's sentenced to execution where they're just uh, making him drink poison. And, you know, that's also weird. Uh... Well, anyways, you know, I was pretty moved by it because I read it pretty early and just the, uh, you know, the setting and, uh, you know, the stuff with the, the Greek gods and uh, belief in a soul and stuff like that. Everyone's talking about their immortal soul. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is all blowing me away the first time. Wow, I never thought about that at all. You know, so then, you know, after you read this one little book, you go and you get the big book, which has all this stuff. Uh, the Republic, Trial and Death of Socrates, Mino, The Immortality of the Soul, Euthyphro, Piety and Impiety. And then I don't know what piety and impiety are. I think they're just talking about good and evil. But it's strange to call good piety. You know, like grace and ungrace. You know, uh, virtue and sin, I'm not so sure. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh. Charmides regarding temperance. Yeah, what? Lysis on friendship. Well, that one's kind of interesting because defining what a friend is, uh, uh, friends are people who enjoy doing the same thing. Yeah. It says something like that. Courage, the unity of virtue, doctrinaire politicians and true philosophers and I'm just, you know, this is pretty useless when I'm just reading from this book. 
and just telling you the titles, the inspiration of the poet. Uh, the good man desires not a long, but a virtuous life. Uh-huh. Uh, mm, lawyer and philosopher. Reign of Cronus. Uh, there it goes again. First taste of logic. Uh, balance of mind and body. Hmm. Nature of education. Man, the puppet of the gods. Drinking. The origin of government. Virtuous tyrants. The life of virtue. Honor of the soul. Precepts for a virtuous life. The good citizen. Education of the young. Three classes of unbelievers. The evils of retail trade. Honor of parents. Burial of the dead. Uh, yeah. Well, then I got the sort of complete works again. This was another book for a dollar. I already held up all these books. And uh, then you can also get PDF files, which can be like 3,000 pages. And... Yeah, Bertrand Russell also talks about Socrates in a very academic sense. And, gosh, this was the worst introduction to Socrates ever. Uh, but basically, you know, I, I'm just talking about my experience with it. And, yeah. Oh, God, it makes me nervous, though. It makes me nervous talking about this guy. Socrates, you know, uh, well, you know, you'll draw your own conclusions, but Socrates, he was in his, uh, he was in a play by Aristophanes that was kind of making fun of him. And then Socrates was written about by Xenophon, who was probably his commanding officer or something in the Athenian military, and a friend. And then his student Plato, so Plato was like a, uh, he was younger than Socrates, and I think he was there when Socrates was uh, being executed. And so then he spent a long time gathering as much information from other people about Socrates to write his uh, dialogue, all his books, where he's just writing about his character of Socrates, romanticizing him and making him as good as possible or whatnot, remembering him fondly and encouraging others to think highly of him too. And, uh, Socrates, he, uh, you know, the, ability, the, the problem of not being able to define the virtues has sort of ruined every word once you take the, uh, Socratic method of just picking apart what something is. You don't know what the justifications of things are or what people are talking about when they just chant things and uh, oh yeah and basically I read this Harry Potter sized book and it talked about all these really deep and thought-provoking things and my criticism is no one in my life actually wants to have these conversations and then the you know, all of that reading, and it wasn't that helpful of positive advice, so it just sort of leaves me with nothing. Yeah. And, but, you know, it's all free, and it's in multiple languages, so, you know, you can look into it and decide for yourself. Oh, yeah, but Bertrand Russell, History of Western Philosophy, everyone's always 
going back to Socrates, and they'll talk about people before Socrates, and then they talk about Socrates, and if everyone's doing a timeline of philosophy, then they're all going to talk about Socrates at some point. So then we're stuck in a loop where we just keep bringing the guy up over and over again. Everyone talks about him pretty early on into the conversation. And says, I don't know what you're asking me about him for or whatnot.